Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Let's Get Together, a social club for seniors. And this Dementia Friendly Fort Worth program it is being recorded, recorded for future viewing on our YouTube and other media channels. And if you are watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay, um, to stay current on all the videos that we're posting. So this program um, is made possible in part through funding from AeroCares by Lockheed Martin employees and also Hesta Stewart Christian Trust. And I am Heather, your host for today's program. Oh no, I didn't update the date. It's not April 29th. It's no. no longer April 29th. In fact, today is the 13th, Friday the 13th. So we're doing Flashback Friday on May, Friday the 13th. Yep. Let's see. Where did the Friday the 13th even come from? Like, why is there a stigma around um, that? It is basically a member right from... Okay, I see if I can pull it out right. Mm -hmm. um, back towards the Middle Ages, the Knights Templar were very powerful. The King of France did not like it because they had power and they had money. And so he caused a, I say, um, all sorts of things. And on Friday the 13th, he had an edict that they were all going to be captured. Oh. Okay. So that's where Friday the 13th came because it was a black wow. Friday. Yeah. Huh. I just always, I mean, I've just always known it referenced as some sort of negative something and bad things happen yeah. on that day. And well, it's, you know, yeah, scary it, movies it, reference it. So. It was a very bad day, but, you know, that was, that was part of it, you know, huh. that, because what they're trying to do is eradicate the nice Templar. Oh, because okay. they had so much power and they were, um, I say, supported by the Pope. Okay. And the French basically didn't like that because the king didn't like that because they were critical of the king. And the king the, sounded pretty proud. Yeah. <laughs> and he was. He was going broke, and so he needed money. Ah. So he worked out all of these different things to, you know, um, accuse them of all these different things of witchcraft and evil and all that type of thing, mm -hmm. and use that as a way to promote to get, be able to do what he did to them. Wow. So such manipulation. It is manipulation. Yeah, it was a very bad time, you know, because. And there's a lot of research done on it. Um, the nice Templar, many people don't believe, ended up being abolished at that point in time. They just moved locations. Okay. And some of you believe they may came to America and set up. That's so uh, interesting. To America. Yeah. So I just, I. I love the fact that you have that you're just a you're a collection of a ton of a ton of knowledge. You should actually you should actually go on the the game Jeopardy. No, because I'd freeze on it. I'm sorry. They, they give me time. Time you got to do it this time, and then I'd be gone anyway. Oh man, yeah. I think it would be I think it would be pretty phenomenal. So I know we've. I know we've done uh, this one. I don't think we've done this one. We haven't done that one. No. Um, the, I mean, what uh, what kind of what kind of memories does this bring up? Oh, these, this was this was back. Dads. Very, very popular back in the fifties and sixties. You know, where guys, you could buy these all over the place. You know, uh -huh. and they were expensive, but you play army. You know. Uh huh. And I'm battle. sure more more it was a. It was considered a boy toy. You would have, you know, yeah. little boys playing yeah, no, war and played with it too, but so was more boys toy. Yeah. And you had a and you had, I'm sure, um parents all over the place that would, you know, accidentally hit them with a lawnmower or step mm -hmm. on them in the middle of the night or something like that. Cause they're so tiny they'd be left here and there and everywhere. 
You see, these day and age, they wouldn't sell them because they've got guns. Mm. Okay, it's violence. Is, you think that's why they're that's why they're so hard to find right now? I think so. Yeah, it's like <laughs> everything, you know, it, it's it's our culture, our society has changed so much that uh, anything that could even be related to violence, they don't want. They don't want anything yeah. to do. They don't want kids to have anything. Well. I can see that. Or we live in such a litigious society. Somebody would say it's a choking hazard as small as it is. Somebody might get choked and I don't want to get sued. And that's part of it too. But I think more of it is because of the, the aspect that this is showing war. Mm -hmm. This is true. Um, When we went to uh, Fredericksburg, um, there was some little gift shop or something we had gone into and you know it's it's a largely a you know a, a german um right. yeah. culture you know kind of area mm-hmm. and they had um, a ton of like amazing german restaurants but in this gift shop they had it was like a clear a clear plastic bag and they had these little army you know um plastic figures in them um and then they had um american flags and then they had german flags mm-hmm. and so it was like you could um and the different, uh, there wasn't a difference in the little GI Joe character, whatever you want to call them, but you could, but they included the flags, and uh, so you could you could have like you know the different countries wow. battling and that sort of thing. I thought that was pretty neat. I had never seen that before. Um, whenever uh, it isn't uncommon, whenever um, people right, in the last few parties we've gone to where someone was getting ready to deploy and so the family gets together and you have like a big hoorah kind of thing and um it isn't uncommon to see uh, a box of these and the the expectation is that it's like a like a parting gift and everybody that leaves that little party would take one of these with them Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and then there's a little note uh tied to each one that says um every time you see this say a prayer for blah 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 whatever that person's name is is deploying i just thought it was a nice little you just kind of set it up on the shelf and every time you walk past it oh that's right and then you know so that's i think that's the last time i've actually seen them but i've never i don't recall seeing them in target or anything like that so you're, you're probably right. They're not uh, I don't everywhere. Think you can find them. I don't think you can find them in Walmart or Target or the mm-hmm. dollar stores anymore. Mm-hmm. Not like this. You can find some kind of maybe similar, but they're not going to be like this. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Okay. I know this yeah. is your jam. And this is a, does that say, that's an Apple computer. Yeah, that's an Apple how big it's showing up on your that's an Apple, Apple too. Apple X. No. That's what it says on the screen. Apple X. But it's Apple II computer. If you look on the the box itself, down in the case, the Apple, Apple. signature. See where the Apple, the colored Apple is. Uh huh. There's Apple II on it, next to it. Oh, to the left of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. You got the Apple on the left, an Apple two on the right okay okay and uh we actually had one of these did you the first computer yeah and it uh it had the little um insert for the floppy disk and everything yep yep you had to buy it extra okay you had to buy it extra. and you uh, have this in your home or at work actually we took it overseas with us okay it was thailand and uh when we came home we sold it for more than we paid for it here you know it was did you buy it in thailand no we bought it here okay. took it over yeah the uh, had to basically through custom say this is a typewriter <laughs> yeah. yeah not i mean yeah. not far off no no that's, so my uh, my, wife, my wife used this to help um, Wycliffe and several others developed the Thai script, the writing okay. script in the computer. She helped develop the writing script in the computer because the language is so different. It's not it's not a Roman character, okay? Okay. Uh, alphanumeric. It's it's a total different, and it's got some very unique things to it. And 
she helped develop that using this computer. Aren't there more um, um, oh, it's not a grant um, like different notations and uh, um, like marks above letters and different different things yeah. too that they mm -hmm. would have to so yeah. so she so what she did was made it possible to communicate written communication there but mm -hmm. using it on this computer yeah. that's what she helped to create yeah, yeah. oh neat and what, what they ultimately did is they would take the same keyboard but they print out little labels to put on the keys okay when they typed it they came up with a thai character rather than an english character oh, that's neat but it, it's there was just so many interesting intricacies with it because you have the you have the um tone marks above you got below you got characters that come down you know on it um just all sorts of things like that and you had to be able to do that you know so so when you're writing so the the writing that um she was helping to convert in in Thailand. Mm -hmm. It there's there are dual two lines on one line, characters above and below, yeah, but it's, it's all it's in one them. line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, huh. and, and there's no no uh, spaces between words. Oh, only only sentences and paragraphs. There's the, that's the only time you would see a space. Yeah, there's no spaces between words, so you have okay. to know. A beginning in any consonant of the word to be able to carry on to know how to read it aloud mm -hmm. yeah so every word you had to know the beginning in any consonant okay all every word okay huh. and you'd have to know the 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 uh the meaning of each word and then you could figure out where did this stop okay mm -hmm. how is how it separated out um, is it read left to right, like it is here? It's left to right, yeah. Huh. And mm -hmm. um, is it similar to other languages where you would have the description and like a an adjective and then the noun? Mm, sometimes it all it, it, it was there. You know, many times it was. You'd have the, you know, the uh, well. You have the apple. Apple orange, you know, that type of thing, or apple red. Uh-huh. You know, burnt yeah, blue. it's um I mean uh the red so apple. It's the noun. it's the noun and then the adjective. Cause I've always heard people say that right. the way in English we do it, we say it backwards. So yeah. I purchased the red apple, but instead now, it's I purchased the apple red. Now it's a very logical language when you get into it. It's very daunting at the beginning because there's 56 consonants mm. and 27 vowels. Oh, okay. And uh, so you have to know that because they use they have sounds that we don't use in English mm. okay, to learn those sounds. Mm -hmm. um, and so you've got to be able to figure out this constant, then they've got some special consonants to go with it, you know, because of the the language in it, you know. Yeah. Um, it's special a, it's, how, it's, like it's, they're not used regularly? Well, it, it depends on the situation, okay. Oh, okay. Um, some like of some the, are more formal? Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, That's really interesting. And like I said, but very, it's one of the hardest languages in the world to do it because of the the characters, no spaces, um, just the cultural aspect of it, you know, type huh. of thing. Um, it just takes a while. I could only out. imagine. I mean, learning any sort of a second language anyway is going to be very difficult because your natural instinct is to go with your, you know, your primary language, but. But then, whenever you add in the complexities of the the culture and the you know of everything, it's um oh yeah, I could I could imagine it'd be very daunting. Well, and I I, I 
was concerned a little bit going there because I studied Spanish in college and that was horrible. <laughs> I think Spanish is one of the easier languages to learn. Okay? That's what I've heard people say and I thought, oh my goodness. I'm but, you know, helpless. going there, you know, that's why I realized it was the calling of God because he made it understandable. Mm-hmm. I still come back and still have trouble with Spanish. Yeah. Now, I've yeah. even studied it now and I still have trouble with it. <laughs> fell in it's almost like hebrew okay, oh, okay. Um, when i studied hebrew uh in seminary it almost fell into place because i had already studied some thai because okay. i was out of the mindset of the english so setting. it isn't that they're it isn't that they are related it's just no. that you were you were opening your mind to a different mind. to different yeah it was yeah. your perspective. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a lot of the words come from Bali, Sanskrit, uh, but there's common, you know, there's Cambodian, Laotian is a cousin language to it. Okay. Uh, they have some other languages that are coming in. There's some Chinese, things like that. Uh-huh. Um, but it's a, it's a very... And then, of course, then they have English, but it's not pronounced the same way. They're 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 called top sops, okay? Because I've heard it's that a term before. Basically, it's an English word with a pronunciation or with a pronunciation of that language, okay? Okay. So computer would it, is. Not, would it sound like a heavy accent to us? Uh, computer is not computer. It's computer. Oh. Mm-hmm. The top yeah, sops. yeah, that would make sense. Top, okay. and top sops was the name. That was the term. Yeah, that was that was the the term used with it. You know, so it was when you took brought in a word from another language. Uh huh. But rather than making the same pronunciation as that language, you changed it into a tie. You know, into the tie. It's, own, it's own unique cultural version, yeah. or with Not the true. um, with all. It's almost like the um the change in fluctuation fluctuations right. and the rhythm that you speak yeah, and, yeah. Thai is a tonal language okay so you could say the same word in different same uh, i'd say word okay same vowel consonant combination in different tones and you had different meanings oh really so then but you would have to write it different with different accents or different punctuation yeah. so you know the way it's supposed to be said and gotcha. if you said it wrong as you're speaking, that, you know. The sentence was, doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, a good one is. You're um, at the podiatrist and it's like, I don't, why are you ordering a hamburger? <laughs> yeah. uh, I was out teaching one day in the village and I was t- doing the story of Adam and Eve. Uh-huh. Okay. And I talked about, you know, the uh, God preparing clothes of leaves type of thing okay uh-huh. well when i'm driving home when my Thai co-worker says you know what you really said there because they didn't they didn't dinner didn't, didn't interrupt me they yeah. afterwards they talk among themselves with the people you know here's what he meant because yeah. <laughs> they they're very on un- most time they're not controversial con- con- controversial confrontational oh okay they, and I said, well, no. She said, what you said is leafy tiger. You said what? Leafy tiger. Oh, a leafy tiger. It was a tiger and clothes with different tones. Same vowel combination, but different tones. That's so funny. I kept saying over and over, leafy tiger. (laughs) Is it a leafy clothes? yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they understood and and they're so gracious with uh, understanding that foreigners don't can't always pull it together type of thing and, <laughs> but it sounds like you pulled it together uh, better than most and what i did also too many times is we had bought the big uh I don't know if you've seen the flannel graph sets they used to have no you know flannel graph, you know what flannel graph is right no Oh, 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 we're going to go in it. We're going Yeah, yeah, teach me. Uh, flannel graph is basically you have a board that's covered with flannel. Okay. Okay. And they have other pieces of their flannel and they stick together when you put them on there. 
Okay. okay. Just because of the material, it's material. Yeah, because a little to itself. Little material hit on it. Okay. Well, the final draft is a way. It was an educational tool. Okay. And we bought Betty, it's called Betty Lucan's final, final Graph. And basically, it was the whole story of the Bible in flannel graph stories. Okay. You could, you know, bid backgrounds and things like that. So you put up there, and as you went along, you could place different things on there to illustrate the story. Mm-hmm. Like they came into town or right. this animal yeah. or whatever, or, yeah. Or, no, this was here, this here, that type of thing. And so... I would use that because sometimes I knew my language as well, but I could, uh, they, they could see it. Now, the uh-huh. problem I ran into is if I went out the next time to review it, if I didn't put it exactly the same place on the board as I did before, I was in trouble. I wonder why. Because you put it there the first time. That's where it's supposed to be. Okay. Oh, and, and it was so I don't incorrect. Put it there, if it was... Same place. But this, that's so long. long. Yeah. So anyway, just think, but that's yeah, almost I, like an, that would here, that would be like a, like an OCD thing, you know, yeah, yeah. instead of a, a yeah. cultural thing but, when the, but, with placements. But it was really, yeah, we had two sets of those and took them all over. Of course, we left them all there because, you know, we didn't need them when we came back. But uh, I remember teaching at a, at a leadership training up in North Thailand and had a bunch of, people, some of them hill tribe people. And mm-hmm. I was teaching the story of Adam and Eve, okay, mm-hmm. in the fall. Mm-hmm. And in that story, you know, you have the figures in there, and they have a story of the serpent, but the serpent had wings on it. Okay. okay. And I put that on the board. And one of the Thai, one of the hill tribe leaders was just staring at me. Didn't say a thing, didn't respond, just stared at me. Uh-huh. Stared, you know. No matter what, the others were responding. You know, and he's just staring at me. So afterwards, we talked, and he says, "You know," he said, "Now you've taught, given me something that I can tell my people because in our culture, the evil one is a winged serpent. Winged serpent in their in their culture. In the culture." Yeah. Why did you put wings on it in the in the it, picture? That was part of the story. It was a part of the final stuff. Okay. Okay. I don't know why they put it on there, but it was there. You know. Yeah. It hit in, but he said, "Now I now I have something I can relate to. I can tell the people. You know uh-huh. how all of this came about. Is that the serpent was not a good serpent because there are some stories in some of the culture they're good serpents. So, okay. Okay. Help okay. type of thing. He said." But the evil ones have wings, and that's the ones that cause the problem. Mm. Okay. Okay. So you know, it's just all sorts of things like that. I, it's how you I, it's how you use it, and do you use it for good? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Use it. It's a it's a die. I think it's an art that has died out. Mm. I I would agree. Um, but it was great communication at that point in time because you didn't have the electronics. You didn't have all of this. That's things. what I was going to say. I bet it's all, I bet it's mostly yeah. uh, devices and electronics. Yeah. And yeah, no. Mm-hmm. There, all you had to do everything is, you know, illustrate it. Mm-hmm. And Cloud Graph was the easiest way to illustrate it because yeah. it was easy to carry. Okay. You know, um, you just had a board, you put in a case, had all your figures in there, you opened it up. I had a little easel that went with it, you know, mm-hmm. set up the easel, put the board on it, do your store with the figures on it. Yeah. So you would Make have sure. to you would have to per you would have to know the story you're telling yes. ahead of time you to be able to, to purchase those images. Yeah, you'd have to go know the story, mm-hmm. but you also have to know what the figures meant. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you have to practice the story several times in order to be able to get it. Right. Could you make your own? figures you could we 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 chose to buy a pre-packed and you know pre-printed yeah i'm sure that was just easiest and i came with that huge sheets and you had to cut all of them out you know off in this huge yeah. final um but you could make in fact i don't know if they still do they used to have a an art project okay and this is something i'd be able to get interested kids in where they would make a, a flannel graph uh-huh and so they take a piece of cardboard or something, put a piece of flat 
flannel around it. Okay. Over, yeah. And they'd cut out little figures and then put, they could do their stories on that. And this was an art project, a craft okay. project. Okay. For to understand that they could tell their own stories. Mm -hmm. Just do a little spray adhesive and uh -huh. put the flannel on. Well, and they don't need the spray adhesive. You know, they don't need it. You know, they just tape, push, wrap it around, and tape the back. Okay. Put tape on the back of the board. Okay. There you okay? go. You know, like duct tape or something on the back. Yeah, board. yeah, something hardy enough to hold up. And then, and then you have the final figures, and you put them on, and they stick. Okay. But they can come off. Okay. Yeah. So you could, they could tell their own stories. You know, however they wanted to do it, they could. If you wanted, they could have things they could trace around and cut around. You know, like uh -huh. dinosaur or whatever type of thing. Or a tree mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Create their own story, and illustrate their own story. So it's like an illustrator. Almost a live illustrator. That's fun. Yeah. I love it. And, when did and you guys I, come back from Thailand? We came back in 97. I think okay. it was 97. Yeah. You 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 speak so fondly of your time well, there. It, it, I love it's it. A, it's a big part of your life. It was a big oh, I, yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a yeah, it's a big part of your yeah. your history and who you guys are. What about this typewriter? Oh, I had some, some like, memories had you have. One. Oh, yeah, I had one like that. There are pains, you know. Uh, I had. I learned to type on a typewriter, and not very many people my age can say that. Yeah, uh, we had one that was in a case, you know. Uh huh. Open up the case, and then you could type on it. And you close Did it yours have the little cartridge that you could put in for the to cover up a word, no. a letter? No. Yeah. No. Ours, did, ours didn't either, so I would I would have like I would dab in the white out and, mm -hmm. and then run it back and do it again. Sometimes had the little paper thing you could put in there and hit it type of thing. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's what. But um, ours ours didn't. Major paper, you couldn't have white out on it. You'd have to retype the whole thing. Yeah, I was I I did it um, in. Um, Oh my gosh, my aunt, I don't know why I was having trouble with that word. My aunt and uncle owned a company and I worked for them and they did their invoices uh, on the typewriter. And so I was, I was able to do the, to do the whiteout for them. The hard part was I, I could do it for them because the, the actual, it was a carbon copy of, uh, you know, the, the tickets and things. And um, the the pretty one with the whiteout on it is what the customer got. Um, and then I just had to remember which ones I made a correction on because the carbon copy we kept and I would have to write in the notes that this is what it actually says, you know? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Believe yeah, it or not, I these are these are in stores now. I saw yeah. one, what, what store was that? Maybe it was a Target. Well, I've seen them in Walmart. Yeah. On it's, it's crazy to me there was yeah. a um some uh there was a what was the style of hat um it was popular in the late 80s i don't remember what it's called now but it's it it fits it's like um it's almost like a felt um it's kind of thicker and it fits tight here but all mm. around is a rim and it kind of comes out like this you know um and I don't remember what those hats are called, but we we went to a restaurant last night and the server was wearing a hat like that. And I thought, so I asked him, I said, where did you get that hat? And he looked at me crazy. He said, from the mall. I went, no, not, not from your mom. <laughs> so you didn't get it from your parent? Because I'm sure your yeah. parents wore hats like that. They were very popular decades ago. I don't think I ever, of course, I never owned an electric typewriter. I had to use them in school. Uh-huh on the electrics in school, things uh -huh. like that. Uh, but I never owned an electric. It was always manuals. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the thing is about, you use them long enough, those keys start wearing down. So they don't give, a, even if you've got a fresh ink on it, they don't give a good, you know, and that's how- They don't tap these, it right. Right, yeah, you, that's how they get these, uh, not uh, some murder mystery stories they figure out what they did is because who did it because of the typewriter that they used and things like that oh that's smart yeah. oh that is smart i like that yeah 
Are we at, we're at a quarter, we're at a quarter after, we're at a quarter after oh, already. We just talk all the time. And we've Go. only gone through two slides. I know, I'm we talk you. all the time. Yeah, I yeah. know, but I love, I love these Flashback Fridays. I learned so much. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Well, See, when, it, when, it's only me, when it's only me, we probably don't cover as much because we talk about everything else. When other I, know. People, they, I know, but that's what I'll, makes it so good. I let them talk, you know, things like that. So. <laughs> that's what makes it so good. Yeah. Well, yeah. hopefully, hopefully, hopefully next time we talk, um, I'll be, uh, I'll be at, at my house. Hopefully okay. that's the plan. Well, um, but not... apparently I had some, I had some typos on that um, PowerPoint, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to use it to close out, but I do know we have Nia on Monday. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll be there Monday for Nia. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll be here through next week. We'll leave a week from today from Florida. Yeah. Okay. 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 okay, cool. Yeah. I have the other grandkids coming this evening. They're going to spend overnight with us. And, that sounds and fun. The, the Girl Scout outing tomorrow evening, you know, type of thing. That's fun. Yeah. I love it. Well, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you. Thank you. It was Thanks awesome so as usual. You're I'll welcome. See you. I'll see you Monday. All right. Have a great, great, great weekend. You too. All right. Bye. Bye. -bye.